Saturday. Okay. okay. Uh, the hearing of the appeal in this matter is being held by way of teleconference. Any any judgments, orders, or directions made after or during the course of this hearing will be issued by the registry in Dubai on the Court of Appeals instructions. The hearing today is in the matter of CA 9 2020 before the Chief Justice Zaki Azmi, Justice Sir Richard Field, and His Excellency Justice Ali Al Matani. The appellant is a litigant in person represented by Walid Dwila. The respondent is a litigant in person represented by Julian Delange. Yes, uh, can, can the parties identify themselves, please? Good, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Walid. I'm representing uh, my dad, uh, Mr. Salem Dwella here, uh, who is uh, has some health issues and is not able to uh, uh, to be present here. Uh, in so this you're call. representing your father, Walid. Your name is Walid, representing your father. Okay. And the, the respondent. The respondent. Good morning, Your Honour. Um, my name is Julian Delange, and I'm appearing on behalf of the respondent. Yeah. Uh, before you proceed on, we notice from your submission, uh, Mr. Mr. Walid, are you a lawyer by qualification, by, by, by chance or something? Not at all, uh, Your Justice. Um, the reason why I'm representing my dad is because we have consulted several lawyers. Obviously, this has been dragging for quite some time, and uh, we, we run short of cash, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually representing him uh, because of that. Mm. No, we, we notice that there is certain point of law which you have overlooked. And uh, my learned brother, uh, the wise uh, Richard Field, uh, brought to our attention this provision. And perhaps uh, I should allow Sir Richard to say something on this. Sir Richard, I pass the mic to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, could the, the representatives of both parties look at the particulars of claim that were before His Excellency Judge Omar when he heard the original application and look at paragraph 31. And let me know when you've had a chance to read paragraph 31. Yes, sir. I um I may not have that in front of me All at right. the moment. I'll I might... read it. Yeah. All right. Read it to you slowly. In paragraph thirty one reads the seller made grave misrepresentations to the claimant, contrary to Article twenty nine of DIFC law number five, two thousand and five, the law of obligations. Concerning the stage construction at the time in which the unit would be ready for occupation, the location of the unit within the project, the lack of full view, and more poignantly, the unacceptable size difference, and wrongly induced the claimant to sign the sale and purchase agreement. So that is a claim for misrepresentation. And it doesn't have to be a fraudulent misrepresentation to qualify as a misrepresentation. Now, in the law of obligations at Article 9, there is a provision concerning limitation. In other words, the time in which proceedings must be brought. And if you'd like to make a careful note of Article 9, sub paragraph 2 of the law of obligation now you may not have this in front of you but i'm going to read you slowly what article 2 says and i apprehend you'll be given an opportunity uh, to get hold of this provision so that you can consider what the court is uh, going to be proposing Article 9.2 of the Law of Obligations reads as follows. For the purposes of an action brought under chapters 2, 3, or 4 of Part 3 of the Law of Obligations, a cause of action arises on the earliest date 
on which the claimant knows or ought reasonably to know about the loss that gives rise to the cause of action, provided that any action is brought within 15 years of the date that the cause of action in fact arose. Now, article, uh, chapter 4 in part 3 of the Law of Obligations deals with misrepresentation. And that is referred to in paragraph 31 of the points of claim. So that means that the claimant had 15 years from the time that he was aware that there had been a misrepresentation in order to start his claim. And uh, it seems to us that on any view of the facts, this claim was begun within the 15-year period. There is a, um, a, 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 a there was eventually a site visit by the claimant, which came. Uh, to, to some point, some some weeks after the final attempt had been made through the the, the claimant's representative uh, to obtain a meeting, and one can therefore have a rough idea of when that would have been, but it was clearly at a time where our uh, 15 years had n well. But let me put it this way. Taking 15 years from beginning from the time that the claimant went to see the apartment on offer uh, is well within the 15 year period. And so we, we think there may have been uh, an un, un, unfortunate omission to have regard to Article 9.2. And I suspect that during the hearing before His Excellency Judge Omar, neither, neither representative drew his attention to this provision. And so he made his decision in ignorance of this provision. Normally, if counsel, if qualified lawyers had been appearing, uh, the judge would have been told about this provision and he would have taken it into account. I think Chief Justice may have um, something to say now about the implications of this uh, provision that I've drawn your attention to. Uh, Mr. Walid, do you understand, as a lay person, do you understand what Sir Richard was saying? Uh, His Justice, I do. Uh, I'm not an expert in law by any means, but I do understand uh, um, what His Chief Justice was, uh, was saying. Uh, in relation to the uh, uh, limitation period that was brought um, by yes. uh, the market. If, if you had, if the judge had been drawn, at his attention has been drawn to the provision of Article 9.2 relating to misrepresentation, you would have 15 years from the time you discover the defect or the rather the, the, the department. Uh, uh, to, to, to make your claim instead of just six years under the normal contract. And you pleaded this, but they, you didn't, I didn't know what happened, you didn't argue, and it's not even, and I, reading from your submission, you seem to be confused between a fraudulent misrepresentation and a simple misrepresentation. The, the, Sir Richard was talking about the simple uh, misrepresentation without fraud. You don't have to prove fraud. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, um, uh, His Justice. But we went also uh, uh, further to argue that the breach, uh, we were made aware of the breach actually in 2019, 24th of yeah. October, that's when, when we got the confirmation uh, uh, from the Maxwell uh, report, which is an independent uh, yeah, surveyor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah sorry. If, if you discover in 2019, plus 15 years, 
that would take you to 1924, no, 2034. Uh -huh. 2034 to file your claim. That is excellent news. Uh, thank you very much for bringing you know, that up. But, uh, but, but uh, you, you have to take this up. Uh, I don't know what, the, what the, your, your respondent has to say. Perhaps we should hear what you have to say. Uh, respondent, you know, for myself, I was thinking I'm, I'm a man of uh, a person who encourage uh, settlement out of court. I am a man who been promoting uh, what's the term, uh, Judge Ali? Solo, 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 to, to, to for parties to find a settlement. And uh, perhaps in the light of this, uh, the parties, uh, uh, def respondent and defendant could sit together and perhaps relook at their rights under the law and perhaps uh, may be able to arrive at a conclusion or, or do you want more time to make your submission either in writing or in person? Can I hear the, the respondent's counsel, Mr. Jul Julian? The lunch. Yes, you have something to say? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I, I certainly do. Um, and, and my first point is that this point was in fact discussed during the hearing. Now, as we speak, I'm trying to flip through my notes to see if I made a note of it. I'm not sure if the, the hearing was recorded, um, but it certainly was discussed and it was, um, it, it was certainly brought to the attention of the judge. So that's my first point that the judge did take this into account as part of the hearing. The second point is the reason that was not applicable was because that's not something the claimant has been pursuing. Um, and, and it was not, um, it, it was certainly not um, pursued at that point. Um, and the discussion was always about fraud and bearing in mind um, the strikeout application we were dealing with the submissions made by um, the applicant in this case and um, the case was always put in, 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 the, um, in the basis of fraud, fraudulent misrepresentation. So, so those are the, the, the two points um, I, I just want to raise, and, and I can touch on those further if you wish me to. Yeah, but even if the judge had not been brought to his attention, that provision of Article 9.2, that was omitted, there was no mention in his... Uh, reasons is you know um, schedule of reasons so uh, but on your part on your part mr. Julian uh, do you honestly as a council believe that uh, uh, the response the applicant or rather the, the claim uh, appellant would have something to go on under article 92 the the, uh, so the understanding is even even on paragraph 31, albeit I do accept the reference to Article 29 of Law Number no. 5 of 2005 and the Law of Obligations, um, and, and perhaps it is a, a drafting point um, that wasn't clarified. But the, 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 there are four points that are raised. One is the stage of construction. Um, the, la the second is the location, the third is the lack of pool view, and the final is the size. Those are contractual matters, um, and this, these proceedings have always pursued, um, proceeded sorry, on the basis that the appellant was pursuing a contractual claim. Well, just look at the yes. wording of paragraph oh, 30 of the points of claim. Yep, it's I accept clear. it. It's, it's a plea in misrepresentation. Now, of course, a misrepresentation can sometimes also be a contractual promise. And the remedies are, di the remedies are different. The, the remedy for um, a mis straight misrepresentation, not a fraudulent misrepresentation, is this, that the contract is set aside the price paid is returned with interest and the purchaser gives credit for anything that he has received. And we understand that the, the, um, the appellant did receive a sum of money 
under the contract in recognition of the reduced square footage. Correct. There may well be a net balance due to the appellant. The price he paid with interest, if you deduct the sum that he received in respect of the reduced um, square footage, it may still leave a balance that he's worth suing for. Now, can I say this as well? I think um, Mr. Walid, for representing his father, uh, when he was responding to the Chief Justice's invitation to um, consider this point, was anxious to put forward an alternative contention. The alternative contention is that the limitation period of six years began at a much later date, only when the, um, the surveyors reported formally on the, what the square footage was. And if, if, if that contention were right, it may be that the appellant would have two causes of action, one in misrepresentation under um, the law of obligations, but another for breach of contract. And as I understood Mr. Walid, he was, uh, to begin with anyway, he was quite anxious in having both matters decided. Both is the point that the limitation period began much later than the judge held that it began on. And secondly, this further point that people have not um, focused on, that the limitation period is 15 years. And um, Chief Justice, I wondered if um, Mr. Walid could clarify his position. Does he, does he want both points decided in the appeal or only the 15 year point decided? Yeah, Mr. Walid, can you uh, respond to Sir Richard? Uh, excuse me, uh, Your Justice. Uh, what what is uh, the question exactly? I mean, I, I we we put forward, I think, a, a case of misrepresentation and and a breach of contract as well um, on on uh, on uh, our particulars of the claim um, uh, in. Uh, uh, in response of this uh, of this case, but also there is another point I would like to uh, make absolutely clear here. Um, um, given what has been said, uh, the MAC keeps on claiming that uh, an amount has been refunded uh, to us, has been credited back, uh, and this was based on basically a, a, a one of the many statements of account where they represented different uh, sizes. Uh, this one is on the 11th of April 2012, where they said that the uh, square footage was. 2136.63. However, the Maxwell report, first of all, we have never paid, been paid that difference or credited back. But then secondly, also the Maxwell report confirms that this is not the, the square foot. Uh, the square foot is, is much less, is, is around 1,500 uh, uh, square foot. So, so I, I just wanted to make that clear. We were never credited that, that money back. And, and uh, uh, also the size uh, it's it's considerably considerably less than than what uh, you know they've claimed. Basically, uh, uh, the Mac has been sending, and I have the full history here, has been sending several uh, uh, statements of accounts uh, with different sizes, and at one point they even uh, sent uh, um, a size of 972 square foot. Um, followed by all sorts of different sizes. So we have never been clear from their side, uh, you know, uh, what the size would be. We asked to see, uh, you know, like the, uh, um, uh, what's it called, the title deed. They always refused until through uh, the latest lawyers uh, we got, uh, we managed to agree on, on, on a Cavendish to, to come uh, as an independent surveyor that was agreed from both parties and they assessed uh, the, the final um, area size that, that we, I, I believe at this point, we both uh, mutually agree. Uh, but also the service fees that we pay to the AFCs is based on the uh, contractual um, area unit of 2,400 uh, and two uh, square foot. So, uh, so th th I mean, 
quite frankly, all we want here is to be given what is what we paid for. We don't want anything. I mean, we, we we're just seeking justice in that way, you know, to get what we're owed. Nothing less, nothing more, you know. Uh, and also, we're seeking as well, and I've tried to push all sorts of negotiations with the MAC as well to get something of the same size, even if it's a residential unit, if it, even if it's somewhere else. I mean, at this point, we we really exhausted all of our uh, avenues, uh, you know, because uh, the MAC has not been responsive. They've not been uh, collaborating until uh, I think last month I sent an email to uh, to uh, Mr. Julian asking if we can settle this in an amicable way. There was no response from Mr. Julian, uh, and and uh, you know it's 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 really frustrating because all we want literally is to get what we have paid for and what's on the contract nothing more and and uh, okay uh, yeah uh, yeah you wanna... yes go on no wait wait a minute not... mr walid mr walid yes mr walid Just, yes can, can you tell can you tell us what was the exact size that you i, I i've gone through this but i can't remember the figures what was the exact size the apartment that you purchased on the on on the paper on the on the agreement? Okay, so uh, uh, on the paper, the square foot is two thousand four hundred and two point fifty three square foot. Okay, and then it has to face the face the face the 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 pool. I think something like that. Yeah, it had yeah. to face the pool. And it had to high, have high, and on higher higher level. Correct, with two parking bays as effect. well. And two parking bays. Okay, what, what, and for what's the value? What's the cost in a, AED? Uh, what we paid for it was, um, yeah. yes, it was three point eight four four. Uh, three eight, three four, million four. eight hundred forty four and forty eight. So three million eight hundred forty four thousand and forty eight uh, uh, dirhams. Dirhams. And then what you get? What did you actually get? When 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 we uh, when when my dad actually uh, visited the, the unit, uh, he was in total shock. Uh, first of all, the size. No, no, don't, don't, yeah, don't, 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 yeah, don't. yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't get emotional. Don't yeah. get emotional. Just tell me, tell yeah. us what you did yeah. to according to this your surveyor. Yeah. What did you finally get exactly? Oh. Actually, what did you oh. actually get? Okay, uh, in uh, terms of size, of how what? What's got, what is the square footage that you actually got? got? So in terms of size, what we got, yes. um, uh, it was, uh, let me just double uh, check this. Um, it was 1,588. 1,588. And then the cost, the value? Uh, you do not know. I, I don't know, no. You do not know, huh? and it's not facing the pool. It's not facing the pool. It has no daylight. It's actually the windows are. Uh, it's basically under the podium of the of the swim pool. So so uh, you're facing a wall. Oh, I see. And then the higher level, the lower level, of course, because it's uh, beneath. And then the... you, you got your you, you got your two car parks. And no, uh, and, uh, even even that we did not get. Only one kappa? Only one. One kappa. Okay. Uh, uh, what was that? And how much were you compensated? They said they paid you something, 300 over 1,000? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, it was, they sent a statement, yes. They sent a statement saying, okay, because we assessed that this is the, uh, uh, it was the wrong assessment anyway, because basically uh, they believed that, uh, let me just check this, uh, they believed that uh, it was around 1,200. And so they said, okay, we can credit you back the difference uh, because on the SBA, on the SPA uh, agreement, uh, there is a law saying that if the uh, uh, unit size is more than five yes. percent in difference, then you need to yes. be compensated. So they wanted to compensate us for for that difference. Um, we uh, we actually refused. Oh, how much? How much was that? How much was the, what they were supposed to pay you? How much was that? Uh, I can check that. Uh, I'm try I'm trying to find a solution. You know, a makeable solution. I'm not looking at the law for now. Just for the moment. Just for the moment, so that parties can understand this sensibly. 
instead of trying to say this is the law, this is the law, and this is the law, you know, I'm trying to find a way for solution. So how much uh, were you supposed to have got? How much were you supposed to have been refunded? Um, so uh, uh, three hundred something, three hundred. Yeah, yeah, three 300, about three hundred square. Foot, yeah, about three hundred square foot. Yes, correct. Something like that. You know. Something like that. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I the disc it. Sorry, uh, I I I I found it here. Um, yeah. So uh, the 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 email that they sent because this is what mm -hmm. Damak did on the 29th of November 2012 um, that uh, they affirmed that the discrepancy in size from the total area as sold of 2,402,153 and the total area that they believed uh, it was uh, the the right size which was 2,136.63 so it's about uh, less than 300. No, in in terms of uh, 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 their homes, what? How much did they pay you? Or how no, much did not, they, they say did not they pay paid you? I, um, I, how I, much did they offer to pay? Uh, yes, I understand. I I'll be honest with you. I don't have that uh, document in front of me right now. I can find it and send it uh, uh, with with the registry. Uh, provide okay, that email now, because now, I have that email. Now, now let me go to let me go to Mr. Delange. Delange. Thank you. Mr. Delange, yes. Dylan Delange. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, factually, 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 as what Mr. Walid said, do you agree to the facts? Uh, certainly do not, sir. Um, and thank you for giving me the opportunity. Um, I, I do note, of course, that I understood the point on appeal was a limitation one solely, but if we're going no, no, to forget, get forget, merits, forget, forget about the law, forget about the law for a while, forget about the law. I'm talking about the facts. Okay. I'm trying okay. to just do uh, what they call uh, a very crude uh, palm, palm tree justice, you know, find a way to make both parties happy. I'm not. Put, I'm putting the law aside for now. Uh, okay. Is there a way that you can sit with the client and honestly, objectively, Forgetting, I'm forgetting that you're representing a uh, sub so and so, a big corporation. Find a way to compensate uh, Mr. Duella uh, for what he has not got. Don't go into the technicalities of the law. Don't go on the you misrepresentation. Right. Forget about the sorry limitation. Forget about the limitation for a while. Is that possible for your client to do that? Can, can I can I give our version of events? Perhaps okay. That would assist the court. So let's just start it at, at the at the end. The in terms of the unit size, which is the number one issue that the appellant is taking in this case. In terms of the size, the agreement for sale and purchase had a total area of two thousand four hundred and two. Dot 53 square feet. That's all it said. And as I had set out in my skeleton arguments in relation to the original hearing, the SPA deals with how that total area, bearing in mind he bought off plan, the SPA deals with how that total area is calculated. So that is what the SPA says. Now, the as built situation is completely agreed between the parties. We agree that the net area is 1588.44. The total area is 2136.63. So you have a discrepancy between 2402 and 2136. Accepted. We've accepted this from day one. In fact, we wrote to the appellant and informed the appellant of the discrepancy. There's no representation. There's no fraud. We're not trying to hide. We dealt with it and we gave a refund in accordance with the terms of the agreement. That refund was issued on 31 December 2011 for the amount of 310,787 dirhams. That was bundle uh, document four in the, um, in, in the bundle at the hearing before the original judge. Now, was as that, you can imagine, the way these things... Excuse, are, me, excuse me, was that sum... Yeah actually paid by way of a bank transfer or a check or whatever or was it just a book entry no sir i have the now again i wasn't compared i have the statement of account in front of me and the way it works is 
um, you, you know, payments are received, payments are gone out, etc. And so this amount was offset account against his account. So it, it, it is there is proof of this, and it was included in the original hearing. It was a credit memo, is the way it was described. So it reduced the amount that he was required to pay in, in terms of the purchase price. And, and again, that's a matter of account. I do have this statement in front of me. Um, I appreciate that you don't. Um, but, but, but we don't consider that an area of, of dispute either. Now, if, if I may continue, though. So in 31 December 2011, um, the statement of account is, is the credit we issued. So bearing in mind, the SPA was in, entered into mid-2010. By the end of the following year, um, the issue had been identified, communicated, and a credit has been given. We've never tried to do anything other than accept that there was a discrepancy. Now, bearing in mind, the SPA, and I, I need to keep stressing this, the SPA deals with this situation because of the circumstances of, of the purchase. The, the issue is simply with respect to the appellant's understanding of how the unit size was calculated. We sympathise and we have done everything we can to amicably settle this. This has been going on for many, many years. We met with him, we tried, and this I, I must admit this was before, before my time and the person who was taking carriage of this at the time has left. We, we offered a new apartment, we went to the building, we tried to understand everything. The, in terms of the pool, um, I, I would invite um, Mr. Dweller to point out the terms in the SPA that deal with the pool view because I can't find any. Um, I, I take it that this is a matter um, that would be dealt with on the merits and perhaps a witness statement would be needed and he needed to be cross-examined, but I can't find any reference to the pool. In terms of the time for completion, this is another issue that was um, dealt with um, in terms of the, 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 the contract itself. We've never tried to hide the size of the unit. And just to reinforce this, we not only agree, but the newest document that Mr. Dweller has submitted with his skeletons, which I have only just seen yesterday, is a report issued by Cavendish Maxwell, and that's at um, page 2-34 of the bundle. Now, the findings uh, that the net area is 1571.85, which is essentially the same as what both the parties are saying. So this is not a point in dispute. The issue is Mr. Dweller's understanding of the contract. There he has been compensated for this. If he wants to commence proceedings for misrepresentation, he would do so. But whilst we're dealing with the merits, I would encourage him... <laughs> We, we would struggle to understand his case. We've tried to sit with him. We've tried. We just want this to go away. This has been going on for a very long time. It's a bit cheaper to dump up to go and settle instead of gambling and wasting your time on... I want to... I want to... I wouldn't I want use the word wasting, but spending your time and council fees to instead pay off to something which uh, makes him happy. Not not overly, but something fair, but reasonable. This has been explored, Your Honour. We take your point and we wholeheartedly agree. We have explored this, the records, the documents submitted by Mr. Dweller as part of his um, bundle will, will evidence the amicable settlement attempts we made. I, I don't know what else we can do. He's going to continue pursuing us through the DIFC courts indefinitely. Um, Chief Justice, I wonder if I could um, yes, raise a yes, yes, Sir Richard, please, please, please take over, please, with both counsel. Uh, and I'm I'm addressing this in 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 particular to the appellant. The whether or not there is a case in fraud depends on what is said in the pleading. And speaking for myself, I cannot. I cannot see any basis at all for contending that a case in fraud has been pleaded in these particulars of claim. And if, if, uh, if that were right, 
I mean, this is only my own, my, my, this is my only, um, my own personal view uh, as at present. If that is correct, the appellant is left with two possibilities. The misrepresentation claim, which is pleaded in paragraph 31, and a contract claim. The contract claim runs into difficulties with limitation unless we were to be persuaded that the true state of affairs was only revealed when Cavendish served this report. Now, as I understand it, this report was served after the proceedings were begun. But I also understand Mr. Walib to, to be requesting the court to decide that issue. The issue being, was notice of the breach of contract only received as late as as late in the day as when the Cavendish report came into their hands. If the court were to conclude that notice of the breach occurred at the time Judge Omar held that it occurred, then the, the claiming contract is statute barred. It's outside the limitation period. And what the appellant is left with is this claim for misrepresentation which has a 15-year limitation period. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Walid, you do request this court to decide both questions. First, whether knowledge of the breach of contract was only obtained when the Cavendish report was um, served in, I think, sometime in 2019. And secondly, are you within the limitation period for your misrepresentation claim? Now, can you just confirm that, that both matters, you, you require a ruling on both matters if this, if this matter does not settle? Uh, thank you, uh, Your Justice. Uh, yes, that, that is correct. Uh, unfortunately, as, as with regards to the pleading, um, you know, uh, we relied uh, to, uh, uh, to previous lawyers that uh, have perhaps not been able to argument uh, the case in the way we wanted. But obviously, this is, uh, this is what we have. And, and I understand that the uh, particulars of the claim and the pleading cannot be changed in any way. So we need to argument our case based on what was written by the, the previous uh, legal advisor. And I understand that. So uh, as you said, Your Honor, uh, we are trying to, um, uh, to get a resolution uh, from your justice on, on the basis of misrepresentation and and breach of contract as well um, and uh, um, and uh, yes so I confirm um, uh, yes what has been said uh, we're trying to assess here uh, where what we're trying to uh, make clear here is that we have been we were suspecting that uh, there was an issue uh, before, but we didn't have the confirmation. And this is because uh, the MAC has prevented us uh, to, uh, in the past, to actually measure uh, the size of the um, of the unit, despite several uh, solicited uh, uh, asks from our side. So we came to know only about the size uh, issue uh, in in uh, to, in October 2019, thanks to the Cavendish uh, report. So so uh, what I'm asking um, uh, your justice is to uh, consider the the limitation period starting from October 2019. Um, also, I would like to reply. Um, uh, you know, with regards to the negotiations, I can assure you that uh, the only negotiation that we received uh, from uh, the MAC were uh, uh, units that were the same size as the one that we have been contesting. And as well, they wanted us to pay on top of that as well, the registration fees on, on the new property, despite the fact that we paid already the registration fees on, on a much larger 
uh, uh, unit for which we have never, uh, and, and I would like to make that clear, we have never received any, any money back on that. And uh, the statement of account that has been mentioned, uh, I am I, aware of that, but we have never received any money back on even on the uh, 2,100 uh, square foot that um, uh, that statement of account was uh, uh, taking into consideration at the time that we now know is not the right uh, uh, the right size. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, in uh, the SBA, it is very clear uh, that the um, that the amount that we uh, sorry that the uh, uh, total area size that we have actually uh, purchased is the net size, uh, the one that we should be uh, uh, obtaining. Um, so uh, it, it, that has never agreed with, uh, that's not in the contract what uh, the MAC uh, lawyer has been saying, and it has never been agreed by both parties. So uh, I, I wanted to make that clear as well. And, and I'm very happy to enter any type of negotiation. We want, to, we want this to, to end in a, an applicable way, but we want to be getting what we have paid for. So if we paid for that size, we want to be getting that size. Uh, we don't want anything less. And if there is, a, if if the Mac is unable to do that, we're willing even to consider other properties in other you know uh, places, even residential. At this point, we have exhausted uh, all, all types of uh, uh, you know like uh, all our energies on this. Lots and lots of money have been spent. And this is why I'm here uh, trying to defend my uh, my dad because this has taken uh, you know a, a large toll on us for for the past ten years and uh, you know with emails with travels my dad doesn't live in Dubai so he he needs to travel from from uh, you know from Europe uh, to come here uh, you know trying to solicit the Mac and and uh, we're really tired so we are happy as I said I've tried to reach out to the lawyer of the Mac uh, even last month you know we want to conclude this but we want to be getting uh, what we have paid for and uh, we understand the market right now is not the market that it was 10 years ago that there would be a loss from our side unfortunately we're happy to take that because at this point it's just it's just we we're exhausted and we run out of money so uh, if 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 uh, 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 mr julian we, um, can confirm we, we, we I, th I think you you've um... You've got over your message. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. I apologize for that. I apologize for that. The field yeah. about this. Now, the Chief Justice, um, at an early point in the hearing today, asked you whether you wanted time to consider uh, the point about the 15-year um, limitation period and whether you would want to, having had time, whether you would want to um, put in some written submissions and ask the court to decide both your issues on the on the written submissions or whether you would want to come back for a further hearing having had the opportunity to consider the 15 year limitation point and um, yes, I, don't, please. I don't think you've answered the Chief Justice as to um, what your preferred course of action would be uh, yes, please, and I apologize uh, again. Uh, I, I, I would love to, uh, you know, like to uh, make new submissions uh, to uh, to the court uh, for uh, your justice to consideration uh, with regards to the 15 years limitation on the misrepresentation uh, um, case, uh, uh, if that is possible. Yeah, but would, would you like to do in writing, or would you want to appear again virtually uh, like this? Perhaps in writing would be would be best, so I would have a little bit more time, sort of, to uh, you know, to make the case. Okay. Well, what do you have to say, uh, Mr. Delange? Yes, sir. I, I do have a few points. I feel that there are a number of issues there that I I, I need to respond to. Um, and no, I'll well, no. Be, so. be, before that, be, be, before that, before that, Mr. Walid is now asking for time to make further submission. Uh, what do you have to say to that? Can so, you agree to that? Can you agree to that? 
can you agree to Mr. Walid, uh, I, I, if possible, we, we don't want to make a, an order. Uh, if parties can agree, it would be good, you know. Say perhaps I give uh, Mr. Walid uh, two weeks and then the, um, another two weeks for you to reply and then another uh, one week for Mr. Walid to make, uh, you know, uh, his submission and uh, then we can come up with a decision later. With that. At BME, you can put whatever you want to say in that submission, Mr. Delonge. Yes, Would you sir. agree to that? Would you agree to that? If, 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 if I'm in the court's hands, um, I, I, will, I will say, though, if I may, um, just to stress the point that this has yes. been going on for a long time, there has been numerous correspondence, very time-consuming matters, um, resources are an issue. I don't feel that the appellant is committed to resolving this. Um, and so there are a few points that I really would like to touch on, um, and, and I think they're important. And, and perhaps once I've had a chance, if, if you want us to come back and have another hearing, I'm completely in the court's hands, of course. The, the mm. first is in relation to the contracts claim. So if we can just deal with this. The reliance on the Cambendish report is, is misplaced. A report that was issued in October 2019 cannot go to illustrate the accrual of a cause of right that was the subject of a claim submitted two years earlier. It just doesn't apply. The second point is, as I've already said, the Cambendish report has come to the same conclusion that the parties have. It's, the issue is the understanding of the terms of the contract. The third is that the Cavendish report has got two qualifications which support my submissions in relation to the calculation of the unit size. The first is that it, was, um, it did not include the car parking areas, the patios and decks, the equipment yards, cooling equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And the second, that it didn't take into account the thickness of a wall. The, the point here is it's not as easy to say, it's not as straightforward a matter as saying the SPA says 2402 and that's the long and short of it. It's a bit more complicated than that. The appellant is a commercial property investor and should have been very comfortable with the, the SPA that it entered into. The second, if I may, is in relation to the, the comment of very deep, uh, brief, uh, briefly deal with this, that the mark prevented the appellant from measuring the unit. Uh, that's just not correct. There's nothing to support that view. The unit is, is his. He's paid for it. It's his. Um, and the third is to do with the misrepresentation claim. I accept um, the court's position um, in relation to paragraph 31. I, I read that this morning. Um, and I do accept that. I, I took this on um, at the time of the strikeout hearing. This was never an issue dealt with. Article 9 was dealt with at the hearing, but the, the pleading point was not, and I take point with that. But just just on that point, to, to understand how we, we got here, the claimant was not pursuing this. The claimant has not put forward in these proceedings any evidence that it was induced to enter into the SPA on the basis of a fraudulent or otherwise misrepresentation. So we're dealing with a separate issue now. We're not dealing with their understanding of the SPA. We're, we're talking about their decision to enter into the SPA. Now, if, if, the, if the terms that they entered into are not complied with, then there is a breach of contract claim, and, and, and I've submitted um, on that and uh, dealt with those various points. But if, if the claim is now that they were induced to enter into this as a result of a misrepresentation, my first question would be, what is that misrepresentation? Well, wait a moment. You've, you've, you've been referred to paragraph 31. We're concerned only with yes. the pleading. I mean, you have to be blind in one eye and stuffed in the other not to understand what the alleged misrepresentations are. It's all in paragraph 31. And um, the, the appellant is, if you like, the, this is the appellant's case. There it is. And what the merits are would have to be decided if this case continues. But as a matter of pleading, it seems to me to be perfectly plain. 
what the alleged misrepresentations are. Thank you, sir. That is why Mr. Delange and Mr. Walid, I am seriously putting to you, well, we can fix a hearing for what we have said, like I suggested earlier, but I think Mr. Del, uh, Mr. Walid should be sitting with your clients, Mr. Delange, not you, your clients, the MD of Damak. They can make commercial decisions. I would say to the map, instead of paying your lawyers to go for any round of trial, use that money to pay Walid. I would have said, I would say that. You know, I'm not saying who's right, who's wrong. At the end, if the hearing goes, uh, the, the map may win the case, but the map would have spent money on his lawyers. That lawyer, that fee that you are paying to the lawyer, why don't they just take it and give to Walid? Walid and may be happy to just walk away with that. That is how I view it. But otherwise, if parties still want to go on with the trial and ask us to decide, we will do accordingly. We will decide based on what is uh, before us factually and apply the relevant law and make a decision without prejudice, you know, to either party. So, but there'll be continue to be animosity, <laughs> and uh, there'll be continue to be maybe more actions filed later. I do not know. So let's think it over. I'm going to take a break now for about half an hour. You go and think it over. Mr. Delange, you can call up your client and have a chat, what I said, uh, and then we'll come back in half an hour's time, and uh, we, we decide what to do, to go on with the hearing today, or to postpone to allow the parties to put in further submission, or to fix another date for further hearing, for the hearing, we'll decide that. For now, we'll take half an hour's break, I have to do, you're not a Muslim, Mr. Walid will understand. I have to do my salat in, in Kuala Lumpur, it's five o'clock now. I have to take five minutes to do my salat and I come back again. So for now, we'll take a break. For judges, can we go to the other link and have a chat? Judges? Yes, yes. So Jesus. we'll we take a break yes, yes. now. Jesus. We go to the other link and come back maybe in half an hour's time. Very so good. thank you very much indeed. We'll see we'll hear you again. Thank you. Thank you. How do I thank you? From, from your side. Yeah, now I can hear you as well. So Mr. Walid, you're there? Uh yes, uh, uh your Chief Justice, I'm here. And then Mr. Delange? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, is there any change within the last half an hour, any change of hearts? Uh, uh, any change of hearts? Nothing? Your Justice, I, I'm, I'm very willing to uh, get perhaps on a call uh, with the Mac um, uh, lawyer and to um, get a just, uh, you know, settlement uh, for this or like perhaps uh, negotiate another property um, or perhaps just get what was in the contract. So like just get our unit as it was stated in the contract with with the size stated in the contract, I would be more than happy to close this. Uh, okay, never mind, never mind. Out of curiosity, when you buy a property in Dubai, on the plan, do you identify your units or is it just a description that you will be given a unit of this description? Or are you given, say, number, a flat number one, two, three on certain floor, certain floor? Do you, do you do that? It, uh, uh, Your Honor, it was actually stated uh, which, which unit uh, we were uh, going to get. Uh, on, uh, on the plan, on the plan. On the plan, yes, it's DFO P seven A ten, which is referred to as the unit, and and uh, uh, this this uh, this um, 
unit was not purchased off plan. It was actually purchased once the uh, construction had already uh, uh, had already been made. Uh, so we, yeah, we uh, no, no, actually completed. It was just like basically they said cladding work that needed to be completed. So, um, yeah, but what, I, whatever it is, whatever it is, the the unit has been identified in the SPA. Yes, sir. Is it? I see. Yes, yes it has. Okay, for the for you, Mr. Wale, I think if uh, you you can't be too hard on your demand, you know, because at the end of the day, you may not get anything. I just you have to be reasonable. You have to be reasonable as well. You may have to lose a bit of money, and I then the, what's his name, uh, Damang, is prepared to have to cough out a bit of what they beyond what they think is the their rights. Uh, what they claim to be the right. Wh whatever it is, whatever it is, this is what we have decided. We have decided to allow you time, uh, two weeks to Mr. Walid, to put on your submission only on Article 9.2 on misrepresentation only in the context of this case. What is your case? In not more than 10 pages. And then the Mr. Delonge, we uh, will have one week to respond to that in writing, each not more than ten pages. In the meantime, in the meantime, while you're scribbling your your submissions, I would like to also still suggest that one of the SCT judges or nor get in touch with you to find a solution, amicable solution to this dispute. Because for myself, I would want to see the matter settled out of court so that both parties can shake hands and continue to be friends instead of being ordered to do so by the court. Does Mr. Walid and Mr. Delonge, can you agree to that? Your, your Chief Justice, I agree to that and thank you very much. I, I, I do appreciate and uh, as I said, there's nothing that we would like more to this matter to end in a, an amicable way outside of, of the courtroom. And so we are very prepared, uh, you know, to enter into negotiations. In the, in the meantime, uh, as uh, your uh, Chief Justice suggested, I will file um, the, uh, um, um, the, the, the case for... Written, written, written yeah, submission the, the written, on, the written on the interpretation of Article 9.2 regarding misrepresentation. Correct. Okay, in the context of your case, the fact, the facts of your case, right? Correct. Mr. Correct. Mr. Delonge, Mr. Delonge, yes, sir. What do you have to say? Yes, sir. Um, uh, thank you. We, we we agree with the court suggestion. Okay, out of curiosity, Mr. Wali, uh, where are you where are you speaking from? Uh, I'm speaking from Dubai at the moment. Um, oh, you are in Dubai? That's correct, yeah. Physically Dubai. I thought you are in Italy? Uh, um, I'm originally, I'm, I'm from Italy. Uh, my dad actually resides in Italy, um, uh, but uh, I live in Dubai. I work here in Dubai as an employee. Oh, I see. And, so yeah. you, can, you can physically appear before the registrar? Of for, course. Uh, a settlement uh, for, to find a solution to the problem. And Mr. Absolutely. Delonge, of course, you are. You, I assume you are in Dubai. Yes, sir. But as I said, I would suggest the management, not you as a lawyer, the management should be sitting to find a solution to the problem. You know, the person who can decide, okay, pay so much, maybe the MD or the deputy MD or something like that. I'm sure you can find a solution. I have confidence, but you, both parties must not be too hard-headed. Both parties must be prepared to give in a bit. Because at the end of the day, you don't win 100%, you may win 50%, you don't lose 100%, you win 50%. And both parties walk out 
coming. Otherwise, this is going to go on for another hundred years. We do not know. And uh, we are wasting a lot of money. I mean, we at the DIFC is quite happy for you to pay because every time you pay, we collect the, the fees that you file in. But that's not, in the end, perhaps uh, not a good idea. You know, lawyers think this way, but businessmen may not think this way. So, uh, Sir Richard, do you have anything to add? Nothing to add. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you. Judge Ali? Nothing, Chief Justice. I just agree with what you have suggested. So, you got that, uh, Registrar? Ayman, did you hear what the orders we made just now? Uh, yes, CJ, I did. I took note of them. Of course, the last part is not an order, it's a request, if not from the court, from me personally, to find a solution to uh, mediating the, the matter. So with that, inshallah, we will find a solution. And thank you very much. Uh, Ayman, can I speak to uh, what you call no after this? After everybody has gone, can you put this call to no? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. So, Sir Richard, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Peter. Enjoy. Nice to see How, you. Yeah, good. Uh, Ali, Chach Ali, thank you very much again. Thank you. And to the parties as well. Thank you very much, the parties. And uh, I honestly hope we can find a final solution to this. So, thank you very much. Thank you so, so I'm much. Yeah. Ayman, can you connect me to Noah, please? Of course.